so hello everyone uh, so welcome again to this youtube channel so today uh, we are going to cover a most important question that has been asked in many interviews that where have you applied the oops concept in automation framework so we are going to discuss each and every oops concept in a very detailed way first in theoretical way and then practical way on a selenium framework so let's get started that how we can use the each OOPS concept in automation framework. If you are not aware about what exactly OOPS is, it's object oriented programming. So in which we have different five concepts like abstraction, interface, inheritance, polymorphism, encapsulation. So all these concept, how that we can use in our automation framework. And this question is, is you are going to get this question in interviews that you are going to face that how you can apply OOPS in automation framework. Okay, so let's get started with the first concept that is abstraction. So first concept is abstraction. So abstraction is a methodology of hiding the implementation of internal details and showing the functionality to the user. So what exactly it means is that you are not showing that how internally the code is working, but you are only showing fun functionality to the user. So for example, if you are withdrawing money from ATM machine and you don't know the process that how it is going to count the money in the background, you are only aware about the screen of the ATM and the amount of amount that you want to get extracted from the ATM. That's it. You are not aware about the implementation of the ATM machine, right? So that is what abstraction is that you are showing only functionality, not showing the implementation uh, to the user. So before I move to the B point, so I'll tell you one thing here is that in each OOPS concept that we are covering, the first A part is only the theoretical part and B part is how we can use that concept in Selenium framework. Okay, so let's move to the point B. So if you talk about that, how we can use abstraction in the page object model and where it, exactly it is being used. So if you talk about the page object model design pattern, so we write locators in different page and we use them in different page in different in test methods. So what does that mean is that you can't see the implementation of the methods. It means we are hiding the implementation of the locators from the test. So again, let's let me reiterate it. So you are writing locators and methods in different class, but then you are using the same in the test class so you are not aware about the implementation of the locators and methods that you have written in another class when you are looking at the test class so let me uh, show you the practical example in the framework so currently i have uh, my apm project with me that i have created so so we are going to talk about the abstraction so i have already covered earlier that abstraction is hiding the implement uh, implementation and showing only functionality to the user so if we talk about uh, as per the automation framework, if you see this is my test class and if you see that click on view option, if I click over here, so this is taking me to the another page and if you see click on element method, this is taking me to the wrapper page. So if I go to the test class, I am not able to see what internally click on view option button is doing or option method is doing. If I click here. I'm not aware what click on element method is doing internally, right? So that's how you cannot tell me from the test class. You cannot tell a user from the test class that how internally these all functions are behaving, how internally they are working. So that's how we have implemented the abstractions in the Selenium framework. So let's move to the another point. So second oops concept is interface. So now where we use interface in Selenium Automation Framework. So if we talk about the definition of interface, so interface looks like similar to the class, but it's called as in the collection of methods, collection of abstract methods. So if you can see here, the, but the methods declared in interface are by default abstract. And if you want to, if you want to achieve full abstraction that you can do via interface. Okay. So now how we use interface in Selenium framework. Okay. So if we talk about the basic statement, the initialization of driver that we do in Selenium, it is WebDriver driver is equal to new Chrome driver. 
so here webdriver itself is an interface so let me show you this in uh, selenium framework so if we talk about the basic statement that is webdriver driver is equal to new chrome driver that i have shown you if we talk about this web driver this is an interface if you see here this is an interface so that's where we use interface in selenium framework the basic statement itself contains an web driver interface so basically uh, so this chrome driver is a class if you see chrome driver is a class and the web driver is an interface so we are using a reference variable of a web, web driver interface and we are going to use the same uh, throughout the framework so if someone in the interview talk you ask you about that how, where we use interface in selenium framework so simply you can say the basic statement web driver driver is equal to new chrome driver we use web driver as an interface here okay so that's how we use interface in the selenium framework so let's move to the next oops concept so the third oops concept is inheritance so the question will be that where do you use inheritance in a selenium framework so if we talk about the definition of inheritance uh, which is that one class acquires the properties of our functionalities of another class by inheritance you extend the uh, properties from another class that we know it as an inheritance okay so this is the definition of inheritance if we talk about the practical way that how we use it in selenium framework so if we talk about the base class in the automation framework in which we initialize a web driver we initialize weights we initialize property files we initialize uh, excel sheets or if you want to read some excels excel sheet or something so uh, you use it in base class and then you extend all uh, base class through all the other classes like test classes your utility classes so i think uh, it would be difficult to understand from here so let me show you this on uh, selenium framework so now the question is where we have used inheritance in selenium automation framework so i am currently uh, opened a drag and drop test class and if you can see here that I have extended the base class. So what exactly base class is? I have already told you. Like you have, you could have initialized web driver. You could have initialized uh, some property files. You could have initialized some weights over there in base class. So every test class has to extend base class. Okay. So if I open the base class, you can see here that I have initialized uh, the iOS driver. I have initialized the Android driver. So that's how you can see. Like I have, I'm using inheritance and I'm extending the base class so that's how you can give the example that each test class has to inherit base class in which we have used a different uh, initializations we have done different initialization web driver or uh, whatever I have told you earlier okay so that's the example that how you use inheritance in a selenium framework so fourth oops concept is polymorphism so polymorphism allows us to perform a task in a multiple ways so if you talk about it is a combination of overloading and overriding and uh, so we'll see both overloading and overriding here so if we talk about method overloading and you are i think you are already aware about what exactly overloading is that a method is having a different argument but the same name okay suppose the method name is test and there are two arguments and if the method name is test and there are three arguments then we will call it as an overloading and if we talk about the method overriding so declaring a method in child class which is which is already there in uh, parent class that is called as a method overriding so now let's see that how we can use both in uh, selenium framework and how you are going to give answer to the interviewer that how we use overloading and overriding in selenium framework so if we talk about method overloading so if we talk about implicit weight or if we talk about actions class so in which we can use different timestamps like seconds minutes and hours so this is an example of method overloading and if we talk about overriding so we have get and navigate methods of different drivers in selenium so that are example of method overriding so i think that it would be again a bit difficult uh, so that confusing so let me just go to the selenium framework and we can see over there so if we talk about the overloading so overloading is a method having same name but different arguments 
so if we talk about that how we can use uh, that in selenium framework okay so i have a soft assertion class if i click on dot and if i see this assert equals method so in the first option it is taking argument as an int expected in texture and if we talk about the second one so it is taking list of strings and list of strings as an argument so if you uh, see the third one list of uh, only string and string as an argument so you can see the method is having same name but the different type of argument so that is what uh, overloading is all about so i have told you that it, this is in assert class okay so uh, this is in software session class we have assert equals method and same uh, we have many examples like i have told you in implicit weight uh, you can use different timestamps and in actions class as well you can uh, in assert class as well you can have different uh, methods with different arguments so that is what overloading is all about we're going to discuss that where we have used method overriding in selenium framework so if you can see i have uh, written four lines so if you can see that i have initialized the web driver prompt driver in the first line and then i simply clicking on any element and in the another one i have initialized the actions class and then i'm simply clicking on again another element using actions class okay so let me hover over the web driver interface if you can see org dot open dot selenium dot web driver right okay and if i hover over actions class org dot open dot selenium dot interactions and actions if you see the path of all the packages so these all are classes are inheriting the same package org dot open dot selenium here as well org dot open dot selenium let's consider the click method if you hover over there this is web element dot click and if you hover over there this is interaction actions dot click so you can definitely see here that we have click method with the same name it's same name click and they are in different different packages but inheriting from the same package that i have shown you earlier so that's what overriding is all about that you are overriding any method here we are over they are overriding the click method so that's how we used method overriding in any selenium framework so the fifth oops concept is encapsulation so if we talk about the definition of encapsulation so it is a mechanism of binding the code and the data together as a single unit so this is the definition of encapsulation so if we talk about how do we use it in selenium framework so that is if you can see here that in page object classes so we declared the data members using at the rate find by annotation but initialization of those data members are done by the constructor in which we use uh, page factory dot init element uh, method and then after the initialization we utilize those met those uh, data members into the methods so again let me reiterate re so we declare the elements using at the rate find by and then after declaration initialization is done by the page factory dot init element method that is constructor of the page and after that after initialization we utilize those data members in the methods so let me show you this in on selenium framework so i am currently uh, at any uh, page class action sheets page class and if you can see here i am extending some abstract class if i open what exactly it contains so you can see here that page factory dot init element methods that what exactly it is doing is for for every method that i am uh, declaring here it is going to initialize uh, the same throughout the page so i have written it in abstract page class so basically the what i have told you that you in declare methods using find by and then after declaring you initialize method by page factory dot init element method uh, that is in constructor constructor of a class and after that you utilize those method those data members into uh, these methods if you can see these can selection button we have declared it above and now we are using it in any method so if you can see here so what exactly we are doing here is we are binding the data members as an single units right? unit so that is what uh, encapsulation is all about 
binding the data members uh, as a single unit okay so this is all about encapsulation so i hope uh, you like the video so let's move to uh, the another last part of the video let's let's move to frequently asked question later to this video obviously the same the title of the video that where have you applied oops concept in automation framework so again how you are going to uh, tell how you are going to describe it first tell the theoretical definition of the oops concept then tell the practical way that okay how i am using it in my selenium framework that would be the uh, preferred i think way that you can explain it very well that would be in very clear and concise way that you can tell to the interviewer so guys that is all from the video i hope you like the video thank you